Welcome back to Arise America. As Eric Ham mentioned earlier, the reports of domestic abuse by top White House aides have led to consternation and infighting in the, white, in the West Wing. The president didn't make things better by defending the men t by tweeting, people's lives are being destroyed by mere allegations. Some are true and some are false. Some are old and some are new. There is no recovery for someone falsely accused. Life and career are gone. Is there such thing as any, lo any longer as due process? The president said nothing about the victims, just as he has negle neglected to, d to do so in many other high-profile cases. With me now is psycho psychotherapist Judith Levy-Arkin, who specializes in marriage and family counseling. Welcome, Judith. Hi. Um, this is very troubling. This tweet is troubling, mm -hmm. and I can imagine um, it's troubling to some of the victims. What do we know so far in terms of what victims and how victims are feeling about the current situation from your experience? Uh, I think victims themselves know that they only need one person to really believe them, and I'm not sure they need it to be President Trump. How would you counsel a victim of domestic violence who has come forward with these, you know, very troubling and personal claims? To keep coming forward, to keep telling their truth, to find the person who will believe them, who will help them, and support their safety. And what do you think, what message is President Trump sending to other abuse victims when he sends a tweet like this and speaks nothing of the victims? Uh, oh, that, that's a big question. Um, I think it's easy for him to speak this way because in some ways he's a, a perpetrator of abuse. So I think my sense is that a lot of people out there in public are being victimized by Trump every day. Even the people that work for him are being exploited and victimized. When a true victim really only needs to believe, be believed by the right people. As you're well aware, the president has been accused by approximately 19, uh, 19 other women of abuse um, and has, has denied all allegations. What impact does this have on your practice when dealing with other victims if the, per the president of the United States um, is reticent to come forward or to even potentially take ownership of these alleged uh, um, accusations? Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly so, what you're asking sure, me. Sure, sure. So what is the impact in everyday, everyday people who come, see, who come to see you, come to your, to your practice, and we have the President of the United States not taking ownership, he kind of guides the nation in terms of conduct and uh, I wouldn't say morality but definitely conduct. Do you, do you, are I you seeing an impact? Yeah, because he's the father of our country. Since George Washington, the president, is the father of our country. And if, if the father of a family or a country isn't believing his, his family, the people close to him, the people who vote for him, how can that be a good thing? It's, it's traumatic. It's devastating to not be believed. Do you, think, do you think there's a ramification? I'm speaking now of the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement, in a way, is a proxy uh, for the lack of um, responsibility for these alleged allegations. Do you see a corollary with the Me Too movement and President Trump's uh, lack of coming forward or taking responsibility with these accusations? Yeah, I think that victims are coming forward uh, after years and years of secrecy from when they were children to adult men and women. It's not just women. And a denial is a beautiful thing to some people who don't want to face the tragic events that take place constantly. And it's not just chil adults, it's children. And it keeps, seems to be cycling around. I don't understand what is preventing people from understanding the cycle of abuse. Abuse is about power and control. 
mm -hmm. and the President of the United States has it mixed up. Mm -hmm. Speaking of children, what can parents do, what can parents say to their children as it relates to these abuse allegations and also to prepare their children? Well, I don't know if they're, we're preparing them for uh, when something bad happens to them or we're preparing them for what the President of the United States is bringing to Americans. It's, it's certainly a lot of talking. Um, I, I think the conversation's still the same, that when something makes you uncomfortable, when someone touches you in a way that doesn't feel good, you have to talk to someone who can help you. So it might be a colleague, it might be a parent, it might be a teacher, it might be a husband, a partner. We have to be able to talk about it with each other and we have to feel believed. And where can a young person go, not even a young person, if they don't feel they're being believed or being heard? What resources can someone turn to? In New York, we certainly have agencies like Safe Horizons that deal with uh, domestic violence issues. There are agencies all over the country that deal with these kinds of things. There are people in the police department. Police departments are trained now to believe and help uh, victims of domestic violence. Thank you so much. Judith Levy Arkin, very insightful. Thank you for coming on. Thank you.